Most people know that if you want to get your game sold in China, you're going to have to censor your content for the Chinese government or else you're not going to be allowed in. And it doesn't just stop with the censoring of video game content. China also censors how much you can play. For example, there's a law now that says that kids under 18 years old can only play one hour on Fridays, weekends, and holidays. So no weekday play because that's when school is. So get this. How do you think they're going to enforce that? You think that's just some sort of guideline? Well, it ties into the facial recognition technology that China already uses. So it's pretty intrusive and now kids can't use their parents' IDs to get around the block. Speaking of Chinese censorship, look at this. <laughs> what? What is this? I mean, this is what you have to do to censor yourself to get into the Chinese market. <laughs> what do you mean? What is this guy doing? He's like... Take your medicine! Now, before we get into this absolutely hilarious and informative episode, I want to say thanks to our sponsor, NordVPN. Listen, in my line of work, I have the 50 Cent Army after me, I have the Chinese government after me, people trying to compromise my internet situation and my accounts. So, of course, I use a VPN. And the VPN I choose to use is NordVPN. Now, a VPN is really cool. What it does is it encrypts all of your data and makes it safe and secure so that no one can see what you're doing online. But it's not just my special circumstance that requires a VPN. Anybody using any sort of Wi-Fi or unsecured internet anywhere can benefit from using a VPN. And I recommend using one all the time. NordVPN is the easiest to use. You can hop around to all different servers around the world, and you can even get past something called region locks, which is where you're kind of locked out of a certain country's content because you're not in that country. Well, with NordVPN, you can actually go to that country's internet and see that content. It's really, really cool. Don't forget to go to nordvpn.com slash lawai. You'll get a massive discount off of a two-year plan, and you'll get four free additional months. All right, all right. So China's got a bit of a weird history with video games. I mean, the country full-on banned video game consoles back in 2000. They've just recently unbanned them, but it was enough to kill the entire industry. I mean, if you talk to anybody in China, it's pretty much PC master race all the way. Nobody's really touching consoles because they were banned for so long. But that doesn't mean they weren't bootlegging stuff back in the day. I mean, there are so many examples of bootleg uh, video games and consoles back in the day. I mean, Jackie Chan even endorsed a fake <laughs> Nintendo system uh, back in the 90s. The thing is, because China has kind of been out of the loop for video games for so long, and because they have this massively overbearing government, they've been in a position where when games do enter the Chinese market, when they finally do pass the censorship board, it's not without a ton of pu uh, pushing and pulling and a ton of sacrifice from the developers because China has a bunch of rules. For example, you can't show skulls or ghosts or anything like this when a character dies. I mean, they had a huge problem in the world of Warcraft where they couldn't show like skeletons and skulls and things like that because it was considered superstitious. They come up with ridiculous laws and, and rules. Um, there was a situation where uh, Battlefield 4 was completely banned just because it smeared China's image. Um, and they, so video game companies, they have to come up with ways to appease the Chinese censorship board uh, to be allowed into the market. And every one of these game companies, they want to be in the Chinese market because, heck, I mean, that's 1.4 billion potential customers, right? Steam has been under a lot of pressure by the Chinese government to censor. And I actually have a theory because I was surprised that Steam was even allowed in China. Uh, a lot of my friends even use the Chinese Steam client just because they get cheaper deals on games. But anyway... Long story short, Steam, I was surprised, just being a, a treasure trove of video games, I was surprised that it was even allowed in China. I mean, I lived in China for 10 years. I saw how harsh the censorship was. I was surprised to see that people were even using Steam there. But the thing is, what Steam has to do and what games have to do to participate in Steam or to be part of the Chinese Steam network is full-on censorship, just like China's always done. I actually have a theory, and hear me out on this. I think China allows Steam in China so that they can censor games for Westerners. So what I mean is, if a game is going to come out for Westerners that's going to potentially have something offensive about the CCP or offensive about the Chinese government, 
that's going to maybe change Westerners' minds or get them to look into something, then China will say, well, you don't have access to our market unless you censor that. And I actually have a good example. There's a, a country balls game that came out. One of the teams that you can have is like China, right? One of the countries. And one of the characters in there is like Winnie the Pooh. And everyone knows that China banned Winnie the Pooh. Uh, well, at least being able to compare Xi Jinping the, the current dictator of China to Winnie the Pooh is illegal in China. It'll actually, you'll get sent to jail if you do that. And they've actually banned Winnie the Pooh out of other video games before, like Kingdom Hearts and stuff. They actually just airbrushed it out of the, out of the promotional material. But anyway, in this game, the developers are obviously trying to make fun of uh, Xi Jinping. And China caught on to it and said, absolutely not. And they, they said, you get rid of that character out of your game, you're not gonna make it to market. So my theory is that China's actually allowing, you know, Steam in China just so they can ban stuff for Westerners. That, that's at least my, my running theory right now. And it's, <laughs> oh my gosh, you just truly can't make this up. If you guys are not familiar with The Witcher, it's a fantastic game. Uh, open world RPG, absolutely insane character building. Um, very adult in theme. So it's the last thing that would ever be allowed in China. China hates sex, they hate violence, they hate all this kind of stuff. But the ironic thing is that if you turn on the TV in China, you can watch an anti-Japanese war drama where people are like beheading Japanese people and you know shooting 10 of them at a time and chucking boulders at them and being the hero of China. Or there's also the fact that when uh, Chinese kids are in elementary school, they go to like anti-Japanese museums where they get to see gruesome chemical experiments done on Chinese people, just so that they hate Japan from a very young age. But anyway, I digress. The Witcher uh, absolutely would never be allowed in China, but inside of The Witcher, there's actually a card game called Gwent. And it's kind of like a mini game, but it became so popular on its own that people were just p playing The Witcher just for Gwent itself. So it was a, a wildly popular thing to play uh, and it became a standalone game. So it's called Witcher the Card Game. It was released on Steam and believe it or not, it was released in China, which is very confusing because if you didn't play The Witcher, then why would you play the mini game from it, right? But they, they said, hey, you know, China's got a massive problem with internet addiction, so let's so let's force them to play this uh, this very addictive card game. Anyway, they had to censor the cards to enter the Chinese market, and I gotta tell you something. I'm pretty sure that the artists and the developers uh, that made the card game and then had to do the censoring were taking the piss a little bit. I'm pretty sure they were making fun of the Chinese censorship board because the final versions of these cards are fantastic. Look at the dude, he's got this other dude down, or maybe it's a girl, I can't tell, with his sword. But then in the Chinese version, he's got a spoon. You will take your medicine. <laughs> Look at this. Uh, you can also see like they just really don't like sensuality. So you have like uh, this dude that's going in for a kiss, you have this, almost like this poorly rendered like PS2 graphics looking chick on the, the Chinese version. The funny thing is, is that you'd think with the uh, the whole problem with there's too many males is like what, 30, 30 to 50 million extra men for women because of the one child policy in China. So like most people prefer to have a male in China. So there's a surplus of men. You'd think that with all these men that can't have wives, you'd think they'd want them to get a little riled up, you know, and have a place to, uh, how to say, release some of the tension and pressure, but apparently not. They get this frigid woman in the Chinese version. Um, again, this woman that's in peril, she's, you know, fighting off all these men with, with flames and fire. Apparently it's just too much. That is too much, but mostly, honestly, I think they changed this one up because of the cleavage. Uh, in China, there's actually been a ton of examples on TV where they hide the cleavage or censor it or crop the image so that women's breasts are not being shown. Um, that's considered a highly sexualized thing in China. Definitely cleavage is like way up there. That's like highly sexualized, almost pornographic in China, uh, in a country where, you know, porn is banned. Uh, whereas like very, very short skirts and legs are not really as sexualized. It's, it's very bizarre. Um, you can see in this one, it's very obvious why they got rid of this one. They don't like the sensuality again. It's almost, you know, it's to be considered kind of risque and pornographic uh, in China. Now, don't think China is some sort of good Samaritan uh, country. 
This is not a country where like people don't look at poor. And I mean, there's porn everywhere, even on the blocked Chinese internet. There's always a ways around it. So people are finding ways around it. And prostitution is, is absolutely rampant in China. So don't think it's some like moral high ground over here. This is just the image that China wants to project. The communist government of China is like, a, like a, it tries to be, it acts like a prude, despite it being a frequent user of prostitutes. CCP officials actually act like they're like some sort of degenerate in The Witcher, to be honest, a lot of them. Uh, this one, you have this chick showing off her, her leg. Uh, it's funnily enough, I just said it's not sexualized, the leg thing, but apparently it is now. Uh, these dudes are in the background. I like them checking it out. Like, what is she actually showing off in this picture? The, the whole context is broken. <laughs> it's completely destroyed. It's ruined. There's no... There's no sexuality in here anymore. I mean, there's what is she? What is she actually doing? To, is she like pretending to take a shower? I don't understand. It's like pretending to tie her shoelace with her shoe that's not on there. Over here, I mean, you just had a, a situation where they're removing, um, you know, blood or, or gra a graphic scenery. Now, it's interesting because this is not even by YouTube standards. This is not offensive. This is just a, a painting, right, or a drawing. But in the China one, I mean, it's considered, even if, even though it's not a real picture, it's considered too graphic. But I mean, you at least should change the picture. Like you had the, the chick over there that where they, they put her in a different environment, they changed the actual image. The guy's still like shoving something into this guy's face. But now it's literally a game of make-believe. I don't understand what, like you could have replaced it with something. It could be like a shovel or I don't know, maybe a cattle prod or something, but no, it's just invisible. Like, you could put anything into his hands here. This one, I mean, I, I guess what we, we could say here is that the guy in the Chinese version, instead of having tomahawks or hatchets or whatever those are, in this battle scenario, he's he's using the, the shield below him as a drum. So I guess he's, he's playing a drum in a way. He's hitting the shield kind of like a drum. Uh, so that's an interesting way to, to way to go about it. This is he's just riling up the troops for battle. Uh, and this one we have the man. He's obviously just committed a terrible act uh, involving murder, most likely. I mean, there's blood all over the stairs here, and he's taken off his gloves. In the other image, it looks just like his gloves are dirty. So it's just like he went and swept to the. Uh, it, it's it's interesting how how the whole imagery can change because this guy his smug look in the normal version looks like haha like I've just committed an act of murder and I'm gonna get away with it and he's very smug about it in the Chinese version he's like haha I just cleaned the cell and I did someone else's job for them they're gonna be so pleased at how altruistic I am oh my gosh he's cracked me up in this one it's interesting you have like uh some sort of bomb and like fire and flames while some cows are going at it. The only thing they changed here is the color. Um, and the only reason I can think of that is in China, uh, red is considered a good color. And this is some, this is very interesting, but if you look, go to look at stocks, right? In the stock market, you guys know in, in the West or in every other country, I should say, when a stock is green, it means it's doing well. It's, it's gaining points, right? And if the stock is red, that means it's lost points, it's crashing. Whereas in China, it's actually the opposite. If a stock is red, it means it's gained points. It's doing well, it's in the positive. Whereas if it's green, it's actually losing points. It's literally flip-flopped. And that's just, because, that's just because red is a very positive color in China. So I guess they didn't want this wartime, like kind of devastating scene to be synonymous with uh, the color red, which is China's color. This one, very obvious. This reminds me of back in the day, like in the 90s with, uh, what was that guy's name? What's that politician's name? Lieberman, Joe Lieberman or whatever. He uh, he did that big crusade against video games. So then all the video games had to like say what was bad about them. So you had like games that were censoring blood. I remember that was a big deal. I remember it had the opposite effect. So you'd go to the store and you'd look at the back and be like, oh, this is rated T for teen. Like, I wonder why. And you check and it's like, oh, it's got blood in it. It made me think that blood was like something cool. So like you would go over to your friend's house and play a game that has blood in it and be like, wow, look at there's, there's that's actually blood. It's funny how the uh, censorship boards oftentimes have an opposite effect. In this one, we have a beheaded horse. I could see why that would be a little disturbing. Uh, ironically, a lot of people would find that more disturbing than a uh, beheaded human. But here, actually, you know, the funny thing is they removed knives in a lot of these. Um, and I'll tell you why. 
Actually, they had a lot of problems with uh, extremist knife attacks. Not just extremists, just people like uh, disenchanted people, especially with the kindergarten stabbings that happened in China. It's very awful if you, if you look it up. China's got a huge, huge problem. You know how the US has a problem with uh, school shootings. China's got the same problem with school stabbings. Uh, but instead of kids doing it, it's oftentimes adults that will go in there and stab children. So uh, knife imagery is kind of sensitive, but look, I mean, here they replace the beheaded horse with a with a knife. So I don't know what the hell they're thinking. This dude, you have this dude with makeup on, or is that a chick? I can't tell. I'm sitting there with scantily clad women in the background while they smoke. And you notice the smoking is not bad. That'd be considered bad in a lot of other countries, but uh, the smoking is not an issue. I mean, what is it? Uh, over 50% of Chinese males smoke, so that's not an issue. Um, everyone's dad smokes there. Um, but you definitely are gonna remove the scantily clad women. That's that's what China cares about. <laughs> Eat your medicine! <laughs> Take your medicine! I'm speaking Chinglish. In Chinglish, uh, Chinese, you say yao, which means like eat medicine instead of take medicine. So this guy's about to get a dose of uh, Robitussin because he's got a nasty cough from being in that damp cave or damp dungeon, I should say. The other one's interesting too. It looks like he's licking the knife before he goes in with it. <laughs> These the spoons. This is why I know that they're just taking the piss. I can tell that the developers are are just making fun of the Chinese censors. I got it. I gotta say this: the people that are censoring for China, it used to be a thing where like you have to censor to get in the Chinese market. I get that, whatever. But then people started censoring like before it even enters the Chinese market so that they don't get banned preemptively. I'm telling you this, like right now with all the allegations of like genocide and all the horrible things that the Chinese government's doing, my recommendation to these companies, if you're self-censoring for China right now, you might wanna stop because like eventually it's gonna stop being ex excusable. Like eventually the customers in your Western markets are going to be well versed in what's happening in China, the atrocities, human rights atrocities that the Chinese government uh, commits. They're gonna be well versed in that enough to where they're not gonna think that that's okay and they will boycott you. Um, at least in this situation, I think that they're having a little bit of fun with it. Anyway, I wanna say thank you to everyone out there. Appreciate each and every one of you, especially you guys over on patreon.com slash 86 You guys are awesome. You're the reason I do what I do. You're the only reason I can do what I do, uh, especially with all the demonetization that I suffer because of the content that I cover. So I really appreciate you guys uh, supporting me over there. And I wanna say thank you so much, Loud Runners, and I'll catch you on the next one.